All right, Augie, what's up? How you doing, man? <laughs> <laughs> um, so you've been around for donkey's years. Yeah. For those who don't know you, I haven't had the pleasure of meeting you. A uh, quick overview of who Augie is, what you do, who influences you. Well, as far as MIDI music goes, um, I'm one of the founding youth steering members. Um, basically by that, we used to, before the building even existed, we used to meet up uh, from the age of like 14 um, and come up with ideas of what it would be like to have this sort of building that was based on really trying to get young people off the streets and use music to engage them. And, you know, 25 years later, Bish Bash Bush, you've got some amazing people that are here and have done great things and yeah. And as far as me, I'm an artist, I'm a singer songwriter. Um, I'm just about to, well, I've just released my second album. And um, yeah, that's what I do. I know you're a big fan of Michael Jackson. Oh yeah. <laughs> Who else are your influences? Or, or what, what, how would you describe, could you compare yourself to an artist or any particular artist besides him that influenced um, you? <sighs> I grew up listening to a lot of kind of like, you know, my first initial influences were obviously Michael Janet Jackson. Um, I used to listen to Prince. I used to listen to George Michael. Um, 90s R&B played a massive part of my life, like the best. Early 2000s, Aaliyah, you know, uh, TLC, Jodeci. Um, and um, I love, I have a passion for indie music as well. I like Coldplay. I used to love Nirvana. Um, so, yeah, just I listen to a lot of different things. So if people go online and listen to Augie, can they expect to hear a little bit of all those artists? Yeah, I mean, if you listen to my stuff, you'll hear influences from all different like eras. Um, I listen to uh, house music, uh, UK Garage, because um, I kind of had a little success within that arena. Um, and so you'll get a bit of R&B, a little bit of house, a little bit of garage, some ballads. And even on the first album, kind of um, little kind of rock influenced a song called Think and I want to be able to do a little bit more for stuff like that a little bit later on so cool um, before we get into <coughs> thro- before we get into throwback season what have been the uh, highlights so far in your career um, highlights well I mean from in terms of on paper um, it's, it's always going to be you know touring things mm. so um, and who you've worked with really so I guess highlights, um, I was in the musical Thriller Live, the Michael Jackson show, which was, it was a highlight for me because I got to, you know, perform in some great places like Japan and Korea and Scandinavia. Um, I also just f- come off tour of the House and Garage Orchestra, which was amazing because we got to do Shepherd's Bush Empire, which was great. And I got to work with some brilliant artists, you know, Kelly LaRock and um, uh, Sweet Female Attitude, uh, um, at MC Neat I would be on stage you know every night with, well not every night but whenever we were doing a show with MC Neat doing Master Blaster which was amazing because he's a legend so um, things like that were always great and um, you know, I used to be in a group and uh, we did Wembley Arena so that, that was something that was a highlight too so yeah cool that's a lot on the CV <laughs> yeah <laughs> looking back it's like I'm done alright really but the uh, throwback season is going to top all that well, to be honest with you, this project was more of a pet. I've been really happy with the response because I never really set out to... It was meant to be an in-the-meantime, in-between-time album. Right. Right? So and what I mean by that was like, it was like, okay, I've been recording a lot of bits and I've had lots of bits that were favourite things, you know, over the years. And, um, you know, I, I just come out of a group situation and I really wanted to re-establish myself again so I was like well let me just combine these songs together and and you know when I was listening to the choices there's always a tide there's always a wave you know mm-hmm. um, and so uh, I bought a few of my friends around the house and I was like right here's a collection of some songs right some new songs some old songs I want you guys to listen just tell me what ones you really love the most Mm -hmm. and they kind of helped me put this project together and you know again you know it's like a spiritual tide they all fit it's like works together and the feedback for it has been some of the best feedback I think I've had so and it was more just a passion project it was just about the love and me picking my favorite songs really so and what's the story behind the name um a lot of the songs for me were influenced by throwback eras. Um, you know, there's drum and bass on there. There's some early house vibes. There's definitely like 90s R&B vibes. There's a little bit of Afro beat with some of the new stuff. Um, so at the end of the day, for me, it was like it was a throwback. And we were coming close to summer. Yeah. And when uh, the songs sound really summery as a collection. So I just thought, you know, summer's the time when we get at the R&B, we get into the barbecues and we get all of our old flavours out. Yeah. So I just thought this album really represents that. So that's how Throwback Season came about. Cool. Um, so 
Do you have any singles out for it you've chosen? Any music videos people can check out? Well, I kind of like my attitude with singles now is really they're more or less for kind of sending out to promos and, you know, um, putting uh, uh, videos on YouTube. Mm. You could, Because people go to your Spotify page, yeah. I don't really see the point of having a single there and then you're going to go to the album and it's exactly the same song. True. If it was a bit weird. So um, for me, singles for me now are stuff that I send out as promos and I put YouTube videos to. And um, I, as I said, some of the songs there's a couple of songs on there that were they were real throwbacks there were songs that I'd like hidden for years and only my friends had seen and I'd shot videos for years ago and, and then never released them mm. so um, they were two of the songs that got picked on the album so I put those videos out first just as a starter but definitely planning on shooting more videos for some of the newer stuff on the album as well um, probably not until August because it's a busy month but yeah so you mentioned you've been in the game for a while now, over, yeah, t- over yeah. two decades. Yeah, I would say that, yeah. <laughs> so, and you just mentioned Spotify. It's like, so what, how, what was the biggest changes you've seen in the music industry over the past two years? And what would you advise younger musicians to pay attention to or, or take extra care with? Um, well, everyone's a lot more self-sufficient now. Mm-hmm. You know, um, before you, you'd have to pay. You know, when I was a teenager, I would save up a ton of money to go and hire a studio, and I'd know I'd, I've become very good at recording tracks very quickly. Yeah. <laughs> so I'd be like, you know, I'd only have three hours to do like three demos, and I'd get them done really quick. Um, now you can do all of that at home. You can mm. get your own equipment, and the more self-sufficient that you are, the better. You know, because then you can literally be the person who owns your work, and you know, uh, it's just it just makes more sense. Plus, you can now distribute and release your singles yourself. You don't have to be with a massive label. Um, I would say the downside is that everything now has become very um, fragmented. So it makes it very difficult for people to be discovered in terms of finding an audience, you know. Um, But um, there are ways. And I think the more that you focus on pushing yourself, the more that those ways will come apparent, you know. Um, Don't just live online definitely get out there and just keep performing live live is going to feed you do you know what i mean um and uh, you get out you meet you network people uh, don't just don't rely on what is um you know everything is a push of a button use it for what it's for but make sure that you get out you know good stuff <laughs> what is going to happen in 2019 and beyond um for 2019 i've literally just snagged like the most full circle experience ever which is i'm now officially a backing singer for the jacksons um and i start that uh this week basically so i'm really 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 excited about that and and fingers crossed where it will take me um it's like coming full circle because i was a jackson fan forever you know Mm -hmm. so um, yeah that's probably the biggest thing this year dream come true Mm -hmm. so when can people expect to see you on stage um from friday Uh, on friday we're in birmingham uh and then on sunday we're in essex so um yeah so this is now in july this all starts this week <laughs> in july cool yeah all right um good stuff and people can find out information about that on your instagram as well right um the, yeah i'm gonna put it up once i've done the gigs <laughs> <laughs> so yeah i'd rather do them first um in case you know it doesn't work out but i'm sure it'll be fine i'm so. sure it'll be as well um if people want to find you online what is the go-to place to find out about all things oggy right i use instagram more than anything so um just it's oggy music oggy as in o-w-g-i-e music and um so that's the main place and it's the same for twitter on facebook it's facebook.com forward slash thank you so much thank you <laughs>